Start recording. Okay, um, so welcome to the Teller Miners call, December 17th, 2019, uh, tech call. Tech, yeah, there we go. No longer miner call. Uh, today is the two year anniversary of the all time Bitcoin high. Uh, yeah, if you guys remember where you were way back when. Um, but there is things to be hopeful for. Um, you know, we're this month is the teller all-time high, which is way more exciting than that. So love to focus on the positives here. Um, so yeah, let's let's get started. So, you know, there, there's not a whole lot as far as there were new, no new minor pushes over the past week. But uh, the big thing as far as development, what we've been doing, um, we have been upgrading using teller. So we'll be making a big push, uh, which is going to allow other projects to integrate in a lot easier. So if you've ever tried, you can do NPM install using Teller. And what that'll do is if you have a Truffle project, so a Solidity project that you're using to build out your Ethereum smart contracts, you can import in all of the libraries necessary uh, to read and request data from Teller. Um, we're working on documenting that. Uh, we're working on uh, building some tests for that. We've also integrated EIP 2362, which for those who have been paying attention, that is the uh, new Oracle standard. So it's the, the pull Oracle standard interface that we've been working on with a few of the other Oracle projects, and we're going to be one of the first people to implement that. Um, you can go give that a try uh, <laughs> if you're of the development type. Um, but the big thing is, is that we, we have a few projects who are starting to to come to us and they want to know, hey, can I can I come and test out Teller? Can I, you know, just hack away this weekend and see how easy I can implement Teller? And we realized that we were sort of lacking on some of those pieces as far as documentation goes and just easily pulling in and creating some tests for your repos. So we've been working really hard on, on getting that to a point that we're proud of. Um, just so that way, because that's, that's honestly more important than any, even the minor pieces or, um, the token pieces just because having having other projects able to integrate us is, is the goal of all of this. So we find that really important. Um, some of the other things, so uh, we'll just talk to you guys about um, the GPU miner. So the GPU miner has been giving me hell lately uh, as far as building it out on my own. Uh, so I've been learning a lot of this stuff on my own as my first GPU build. So I recently brought in somebody. We will not have a GPU miner by Christmas, unfortunately. You guys can have a half-finished repo if you really want it. Um, but we did bring somebody in, and surely we'll be pushing out an MVP, um, hopefully over the next few weeks. Um, but no definite time frame. I, I want to keep it open. I don't want to optimize anything or, or run it even really before I push it out to you guys. So you, you guys have my promise. I'm not going to be... Uh, building a GPU miner and then running it on my own. I'm going to be giving it to you guys. So uh, Yeah, but that should be happening over the next month um, Because I'm sure as many of you have noticed uh, the number of miners in Teller has been going down steadily so we hit a peak of just over a hundred miners and now we're actually back down to around the uh, little over 50 range and there are a few reasons for this. Um, some of them are that a lot of people who initially staked the tokens, uh, they were actually staked, a, a lot of them when we hit the 100 miners, it was actually staked around a time that you couldn't even buy these on exchanges. People were staking them and um, trying to mine and it was still at a point where you could mine these on CPUs, you could mine them simply spinning up an Amazon server and you know, I was even mining very successfully on a T2 small for quite a while. Um, but those days are long gone. Um, so people have been dropping off, mainly because they've seen the price of the token rise and they'd rather have a thousand tokens to sell than uh, have it staked and not really get any reward. So there's a few things that we, we want to do in order to continue to push up that number. Uh, the first one is create a GPU miner. Um, a lot of miners in the space, that's really what they're sort of used to is, is being able to do GP, GPU mining on these cryptocurrencies. So we realize that that should help to, to get the number of miners up. And then the other piece is 
uh, creating minor pools. So we know that one of the issues for, for new miners is that a thousand tokens, you know, uh, even at today's roughly around $4, that's $4,000, that can be sort of a steep investment for what a lot of miners are used to, where you just sort of point your hash power in a network and start getting some rewards. So, you know, we realize that and, and some people out there, uh, I don't know if he's willing to talk at the moment, uh, are creating some uh, mining pools. So the Teller mining pools, there are some issues that we're running into. If you want to head on over to the mining channel in Discord, you can see some of the, dis we've had some brief discussions there about just what, you know, how to, how to best create a pool, you know, at some of the benefits of pooling uh, can be taken away. So is the question always comes, is there a benefit to having a pool versus just solo mining? Um, and just based on our hashing algorithm, there's some questions about whether or not um, we will be able to have some of those benefits, but uh, we are optimistic. And at the very least, what it could look like is sort of just, just an ability to start mining if you don't have a thousand tokens. Um, and that may be what it looks like for a while. And that's great because hopefully we can get to the point where we have people staked and are mining um, even if they don't necessarily have a thousand tokens or, or we can create some systems where, where if, if the price of the token gets too high, we don't want to discourage miners. Um, the other thing, if you're curious about mining and you don't know if you're going to do well, um, the first thing that you can do is um, you can just join the miner channel and start talking about it. Our miners are generally pretty open. If you want to post your hash rate up there and um, some things about what system you have, uh, they'll be pretty honest with you about how well you'll do. Um, the other thing, if you want to just give it a test, you know, if you want to give it a test on a really easy network, you can join the RinkB network. Um, you'll probably win a whole lot, but it'll just get you used to kind of how to set it up and how to optimize things. So you can sort of, uh, best understand how the teller system works. So, you know, we've had a bunch of people, we have had some more increase about people who have reached out to me to start testing on Rink B and, and I love that. So, you know, if you guys want to, to come do that, definitely let me know. Happy to have you guys competing against me on Rink B. All right. Um, next things. Um, so the, the bounties. Uh, so we have some teller bounties up there. I have added a few. I've changed some amounts around. A few of them have been grabbed off the board. If you want, uh, go have a look. Um, there's a lot depending on what you do. And also if you, if you don't want one of those, if you have other ideas about what you want to do, just reach out to us. Let us know what you want. Let us know how much you want. Um, we'll pay in tributes. We, we want people who, who want to do things on this network because they sort of want to see the network su succeed. Um, you know, we, we know that for a lot of this stuff, we could just go hire contractors. Um, but that, that doesn't make your network successful. It's, it's successful whenever you guys are, are building things, whenever you guys are maintaining things and, and getting people to use them. And that, that's really where the long-term value of our system comes in. Um, so that's really it as far as kind of the, the tech stuff goes. But, you know, we... Uh, I did want to talk there. There's two things. The first is kind of on the 51% attack issue, which some people had uh, some concerns over on the minor call. And then the other is just kind of on Teller's vision and the community that we're trying to build. So, so on the first piece, um, a lot of people had concerns. There, there have been some miners who, who come on board and then instantly they're, you know, they're getting two or three of the five uh, minor slots in almost every block. And, you know, for those of you who have been around since September, you guys will remember the infamous Penguin. Uh, he did this relatively early on. He came and he was pointing. It was just basically he had 10 really big CPUs that he was pointing on our network. And he got, you know, 50% of the hash rate really, really quickly. Um, the cool thing about Teller's security model is that that actually doesn't necessarily matter that much. Um, the reason is, is that even if you get 51% attack and can submit a bad value, uh, we will dispute you. 
if you submit a bad value. So let's say you say the price of Ethereum is zero. Uh, we will challenge and dispute you. Uh, you will lose a thousand tokens. That account will no longer be able to mine. Uh, and you'll have to stake another thousand and do it again the next block. Um, and basically all it allows you to do if you have 51% of the hash rate is grief the network. So you can, you know, if you continuously restake every 10 minutes with a thousand new tokens um, and point your computers at it, you can make it so the Ethereum price can never get onto the DAP. Um, you're paying a thousand tokens or 3000 tokens uh, if you're trying to get the median uh, every 10 minutes. So it can get very expensive very quickly. Um, and th that's sort of the cool thing about Teller is that it's the fact that it, it, the proof of work adds sort of a difficulty in breaking it, but the ultimate security comes in the fact that we can dispute your values and as long as you don't break our voting mechanism, which is right now Teller token holders, so you would need a majority of the, the voting token holders, which, uh, you know, if that becomes an issue, then we have some different issues uh, that we can deal with when the time comes. But you you can't break it by just a 51% attack. And ultimately, you're, you're sort of disincentivized from doing so. So, you know, if you assume that um, the other issue that, that has come up recently is, oh, well, let, let's say somebody would develop a GPU miner and, you know, now they have zero incentive to ever open <laughs> ever release it, or, or even let's say they create an ASIC and they have 100% of the rewards and nobody else can get any and now you just have one miner in your system and nobody can compete. And, and this is sort of a scary thought to begin with, but you would hope that if this individual is in fact a, uh, a person who is prof motivated by profit, um, then they would actually be incentivized to open source this, they would be incentivized to not take 100% of the network because it is sort of this existential threat. So you, in, the, in these cryptocurrency systems, if one party, even the team, had 60% of the tokens, that actually reduces the value of your whole network. Nobody wants to build on you. Now nobody sees you as decentralized and the value of your token and your entire network goes down. So from everyone's perspective, you are sort of game theoretically incentivized to not have a controlling stake, even if you could get such a controlling stake. And that was, that was sort of, you know, the team had really realized that from early on. That's why we, we didn't sort of opt for any sort of pre-mine or ICO. In addition to just being transparent to the community, it reduces the value of your own tokens because if you own a controlling stake of all of your tokens, then the entire network is less value be valuable because you're simply just a centralized network. So why not just be a centralized network and, and reduce some of the inefficiencies? So, and that, that kind of leads us into kind of Teller's vision for, for what we see as our community. You know, ultimately if Teller is going to succeed, we need a community that is really uh, driven towards building stuff that matters, excuse me. We need a community that believes in our vision. So our vision is we wanna provide uh, data to smart contracts on Ethereum. We want to create incentives that, that do that. And that's why we've created this system of token economics is not to enrich the token holders or enrich the holders of the token, but to pro provide an actual service. So having a community that, that understands that, that that aligns that as the ultimate goal, that's what's going to be important moving forward. Um, you know, there are going to be pieces that may need to change. Um, you know, we're looking at kind of Teller V2. So, you know, we've had these smart contracts up there and we're having people build, but we have, we have people who want different things. So, <coughs> so, you know, we already know that, okay, we need to be faster. What ways can we make Teller faster? What ways can we provide more, more queries? So, you know, some of the initial pieces will come in. Okay, so we, we can reduce the 10 minute block time. We can provide, say, an array of data. We can provide byte data. We don't need to provide just uint data. Um, 
these are some of the upgrades that we're looking at. And, and those are one piece of it. And we want your guys' opinions and we want your thoughts as far as what, what we need. Um, but the other piece is what governance do we want moving forward? So, you know, right now we just have a pure one token equals one vote system. Do we want to move into, you need to be staked in order to vote? Do we want to move into, we have delegates? Uh, these, these were questions that we wrestled with before we launched the network. But now that we have had the network that's been up for a few months, we've seen how it's worked. Um, what do we want moving forward? We want your guys' thoughts. Um, so let us know. We'll be continuing to reach out. Um, and for Mike back here, we're going to be starting other calls as well. So these are tech calls, but we're also going to be starting governance calls that Mike will be running. You know, we want community calls. We want you guys to be more involved. We want you guys to, to voice your opinions. So the first opinion, what time do you guys want these calls? Uh, <laughs> if you don't have any opinion, we will just choose. But if you have a certain time of day that doesn't work for a certain member of a community, let us know and we can change it. So those are just the big community updates that I have. Um, and we'll be starting those in the new year. So, so yeah, just, just let us know. And I guess, uh, oh, the announcement we can make. Um, the announcement. Pre-announcement, yeah. So uh, the pre-announcement, we are being listed on Eaterbase. Eaterbase is a centralized exchange over in Europe. They have fiat pathways. It's really exciting. That'll be on Friday. So yeah, um, looking forward to that. So everybody can go register on Eaterbase if you're in yeah, Europe. They have a fiat gateway for people in Europe, for the Euro. They are working on some cool peer-to-peer -peer lending stuff. <coughs> it might be interesting, especially for people needing stake in order to begin mining. It might be uh, a way that you know people that have plenty could could lend and, and increase um, opportunity for new miners to come on board. And it's overall a uh, an exciting new exchange. Uh, be curious to hear your thoughts, and if you guys are interested in using the exchange, of course, we encourage you guys to support the listing. There will be an announcement tomorrow about the listing uh, and when it'll actually happen, but we figured we would just mention it to you guys today. Yeah, and we'll be doing an AMA. We'll do an AMA before the listing as well. On Friday, so um, that'll be fun. Um, yeah, and yeah. then somebody asked about integrations. No, no new news. Um, we've been having some good talks, though, so there's some coming. Um, so it's, it's coming along. Um, any other questions that people want? I see a hey, but that's about it. So, all right. Um, we have Wega. I almost got run over yesterday by a chain link support group on Twitter. They're calling Teller clanky one data feeder every 10 minutes. Can we get clarification on this? Uh, sure. So, Teller is slower than chain link. This is, this is true. Um, you know, Teller. Yeah, what to say, what's a good response? Yes. Uh, so if, if you're really fast, you're not decentralized. It's just, you know, Teller, Teller is even every 10 minutes, but to actually be finalized, we're longer than that. So, you know, like you can have a dispute that happens after 10 minutes. And th this is sort of a clarification that anyone needs in any sort of, um, in any sort of blockchain scenario. So even on like Bitcoin, like after a Bitcoin block comes out, a Bitcoin block is not final. For instance, like Coinbase waits six confirmations, six blocks. So a whole hour you have to wait for that to be final. Similar to like an Oracle, anytime you have an Oracle, you have to build back, what if that Oracle failed? Um, so even a derivatives contract, even if Chainlink failed, you have to build in what happens if it failed. And we handle that on our end. So the idea of sort of instantaneous oracles um, never was. So, you know, we're, we're trying to build a much more secure oracle than Chainlink is. So, you know, like once, once they, there's sort of these, these trade-offs that you have to make. And, and if somebody isn't really upfront about what the trade-offs are for decentralization, um, there, there's probably a red flag there. Um, 
Somebody next asked, when you start GPU mining, we can introduce you to Russians. Perfect. I'll let you know. And then the GPU miner is a legend. So yes, uh, coming soon, I guess. So yeah. And there is, but there was never a mystery GPU miner that is mining on our network now. It is still a legend. Nobody knows. So, you know, right now we know that some people are deploying really large miners, but there's sort of no confirmation that, or no knowledge that anyone's actually doing any GPU mining at the moment. So it, at least from some of the analysis that we've run, you know, it's just sort of, yeah, normal mining and people spinning up a lot of nodes. And then uh, no comments on price action. It's looking good. Like comment on price action? <laughs> Yeah, and now, it, yeah, and now we don't talk about it. Yeah, it's exciting. So I mean, I think we're all happy that it's stable. I mean, because from our perspective, the price really is about securing uh, the network, and they go hand in hand. So you kind of want a healthy price, and this is sure. way healthier than we sort of anticipated this early. So, I mean, kudos to everybody. Yep. So yeah. Um. And next, uh, we'll be making 2019 report. That's true. Yes. <laughs> At some point uh, before the end of December, I'm going to publish a year in review article, um, just basically breaking down everything we've accomplished this year. Uh, we posted a a sort of timeline on the website. You you guys have all seen it. Uh, it'll be an article basically going over those things. It'll be great to to share with your friends and family over Christmas dinner. Yeah, and then a, a future Teller plan. I think at one point we're going to write another Visions article. Yeah, um, just that gives sort of really broad what our what our plans are. So, um, yeah, we'll be working on that over the next month as well, and then we can we'll push that out to you guys. But you know, we're we're really open uh, as far as talking to you guys. So feel free to ask questions, and um, you know, it, it's really one of those things. It's really hard to give specifics in the space as far as where you want to be. Um, just because yeah. you don't know, you know, this is, you know, I've, I've been in the space long enough now to know that the projects that you think are going to be big are going to crash and burn and the projects that, um, mm -hmm. you know, new projects come about every single day that will surprise you and will be great. So, you know, it's really hard, like a any plan that's over basically three months away is, it's yeah. all just speculation. So, you know, we, we can give you the vision about where we're trying to go, but but any of those like really longer term partnerships or anything like that, it's all just speculation. So it's probably better if we're going to make any promises, it's, it's the promise that we're going to remain nimble. Um, and things change really fast in this space. And so do we. And so that's also really exciting. It's just hard to be specific about those kind of things um, without having to say, Oh, we changed our mind and here's why, which is, you know, fine too, but that's why we took that part of the uh, timeline down that just had a little bit about our future. Like those are still exactly what we are looking at in terms of things that we foresee us working on in the time frames that we put out. But it just created more confusion than it did clarity, and so we just we just took it off. But it wasn't that was the main reason. So yeah. So and then other questions, uh, Spud, head over to the Discord if you have questions on the pool when it's difficult to make. Um, but yeah, and the other one, how was the last conference? I don't think we've been, we haven't actually been to a conference and we like, we're conferenced out in September, October, November. I think this person then, might be asking about the meetup. And yeah, we did do a, we did do a meetup, um, last Thursday. So, uh, we had a meetup in DC here with, uh, Jay Rush, who he runs quickblocks.io. He's an excellent speaker. He's an excellent sort of mind yeah. in the space. And it was, it was. Go follow him on Twitter. He's like one of the best people ever. It was top notch. So him yeah. and I had a really good governance talk about uh, just, yeah, it was, it was like, he's like slightly depressing in the space. Uh, <laughs> he thinks we're building, we're building evil machines uh, that are going to take over the world, which may be true after listening to him. Um, but yeah, we can, I actually did an interview with him. We used to run a podcast and 
uh, so that we did an interview last year, probably around this time with him. So you can go uh, look up Jay Rush and that'll come up. Um, or just shoot me a DM and I'll get that. Uh, and somebody else asked me. Oh, we about, also had the um, Brenda, that wasn't, you know, it was a virtual conference yeah, that she attended. Brent, Brenda also gave a speech at the conference or Cosmos. The Cosmos um, meetup or conference. Fine. And yeah, she did really well there presenting Teller and uh, how we might be able to move on to cosmos um yeah another one do we have any more grant applications out there uh i'm, I'm sure there's a few out there we we always apply to grants whenever they pop up um any plans on increasing the team more devs biz devs uh so right now we're sort of just holding the team steady as we sort of you know as you guys have seen the token price it's relatively volatile as far as the amount of funding that we have um so we're working on just kind of increasing a little bit in terms of you know what we can do and we're, we're going to try and support the community a lot through through bounties and uh, eventually we do want to hire more devs on the team you know we want this to be a really tech focused team um, so you know we'd love to hire some, some more people to build out some things for our vision uh, we'd love to, love to eventually we're going to bring Mike Kuhn on full time um, so, so that seems to be kind of the use cases at the moment is you know, we want to we want to bring on more devs, a so we can just integrate into other projects faster. I think would be the biggest thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have a lot of projects who say they want to use us, but then, you know, every project similar to us has just limited dev time. So, if we can just have more devs to just build into other projects, so if you guys have dev time and want to do that, it's really good. Um, yeah, and is there an OTC? We don't have a channel for OTC buying, but you know, exchanges work relatively well. You know, place place a limit order and um, you know, just monitor it and relatively well. But yeah, it seems like everyone is uh any more questions? No. Uh oh, we got one. Uh uh. How is mining going to be working and project integrated? Um, so yeah, we we don't no timelines on when the first project will be integrated, or no promises. Um, hopefully, Q1 of next year. And um, yeah, mining is continuing to work. Um, yeah, that's the question. Uh, yeah, we 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 uh, Binance Labs was from uh, April to May uh, in terms of the incubator. There was a question about Binance Labs. Oh I yeah. Think. Yes. So we, we loved working with Binance Labs. Uh, it was a great uh, accelerator. Uh, I think it really did uh, live up to that, that name. You know, it helped us really accel accelerate developing this project and launching the mainnet in, a, in about six months. Um, so the, the Binance Labs team and the community they provided us in Berlin at Fullnode was super invaluable to be around. Uh, um, other people that have done multiple startups and multiple blockchain projects and uh, that community really helped uh, helped us build and learn a lot and and not make a lot of mistakes we probably would have made had we just built it here in our little cave uh, so that was good and we still have you know although the incubating um, period is over we still are obviously they're investors of, of ours and advisors of ours and we talked to them pretty often um, there are a wealth of knowledge they know everybody in the space that we ever want to be introduced to if we see a project that we think might need an oracle chances are they know somebody there and they can make a um, a powerful connection for us which really helps speed up these sort of things on the business development side uh, for Sandro's question uh, yes yes and consensus gave us a grant so she asked who our investors are um, on our website. So, um, and then Dinge, uh, will miners have to self-tip? Hopefully miners will not have to self-tip for all of eternity um, and projects will start paying. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just gonna be one of those things. Hopefully you can see a robust tip market that, that develops. It's, you know, very Ethereum and Bitcoin are really some of the only few projects that have really built kind of robust tipping networks. Um, you know, Ethereum with gas and Bitcoin with their transaction fees and very few other networks 
have been able to build it out. So, so what we're trying to do is, you know, build on the back of um, giants here. So, and then Jin asked, what's the incentive for a project to pay a tip in the beginning? And the, the incentive is, is for you to get the data. So if you want the price of Bitcoin, you tip to go get the price of Bitcoin. Uh, similar to what's the incentive for somebody to pay a gas fee on Ethereum, it, it's so that you get included in the next block. Um, right now, we're, we're sort of at that stage where we have like empty blocks. So it's relatively, it's basically free to get in. Um, but as, as we start getting more people requesting data and there are different people who want different data, then the incentives should pick up and that's how yeah. we build the system. Oh. Cool, so thanks everyone for coming. Um, yeah, glad to have everyone here and uh, happy holidays. Happy holidays. So I think we'll probably be skipping next week's minor call for the holidays. So yeah. um, it's on Christmas Eve, I think. Yes, so thanks for coming. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Talk to you guys soon.